we have had so many difficult decisions and choices to make over the last year. Even just on Friday there, I'd managed to fix something for my mum. And in normal times, uh, she got a wee bit emotional in the fixing of it. And in normal times, you would just hug it out. But we chose not to. First time in their house in over a year, and we chose to keep a distance apart, not touching. We are making choices every day over difficult things. And the joy of this resurrection moment is also surrounded by choices. There are three moments here in John's Gospel, probably many more, when Jesus could have been seen by the disciples for the first time and the joy of what has taken place could have been announced. It could have been in the excitement of Peter and John running to the tomb and seeing the grave clothes and the empty slab where Jesus had been laying. And I can see the power of that moment when Jesus steps forward and speaks with these two key disciples, shares with them, I'm alive, and they return to the others probably still running. Or it could have been in the evening when all the disciples are gathered and he does come at that point and stand among them, but that isn't when he chooses to first appear. This is the choice that Jesus makes for this one moment that can never be repeated. This astonishing, life-changing revelation. He chooses the moment between Peter and John's sight of the empty tomb and the gathering of the whole group of disciples. And he chooses the moment when Mary is in the garden outside the tomb, alone and in tears at the loss of the body of Jesus broken by his death. This is the moment that Jesus chooses the first revelation of his resurrection, the first knowing. And I can't give you an answer of why to that, much as I've tried in these last few days to work out the why of this meeting of Mary and Jesus. I have no direct answer about why he meets with Mary in the garden first rather than with Peter and John in the empty tomb or with all the disciples together later on. I don't know why he did that, but this is the choice of Jesus. And there are things that we can learn from that choice that is made and what takes place in that choice. For one, Mary is the first witness, the first teller of the resurrection. Whenever we speak of the resurrection, her words I have seen the Lord, are the first telling of what has happened. Her words are on our lips. I have seen the Lord before Peter, before John, before the disciples gathered in the upper room. The first witness is Mary Magdalene, who was waiting at the tomb. Her witness begins all of our acts of witnessing to Jesus raised to new life. Witness begins in this meeting of Mary directly and personally with Jesus risen alive and speaking to her and there are two things that stand out in this meeting together for me one is that we will be familiar with across this year where he says Mary don't touch me don't hold on to me and again it is difficult to know exactly what this is all about what is meant particularly when in the following week Thomas is invited to put his finger directly into the wounds of Jesus. The reason given is hard to fully make sense of why Jesus asks this of Mary. There is one recent exploration of this that relates to the physical violence and abuse of the cross. For any victim of abuse there can be issues of touch and maybe part of what is taking place here links to that. And I found value in thinking around that, particularly in Mary's choice to not hold, to not touch, but to be open towards this new direction of relationship. That new thing will be characterised by the work of the Spirit, the promised Spirit who comes at Pentecost. But for now, 
there are these two aspects to the life of Jesus who's raised to new life that is becoming clear in the midst of this choice that Jesus makes to first meet with Mary. First then, in this word, don't hold on to me. This relationship with the risen Jesus is different from that which held before when they used to walk the shores of Galilee or run across the hills of Judea and hear him speaking and be there in the midst of the miracles. This word, don't hold on to me, speaks of a separation of the body and yet the gift of the Spirit is coming. In the choice that Jesus makes for this moment, Mary is given the direction and space that she needs to open towards this new time, this new relationship, this different time with Jesus, the risen Jesus. This is a new time. And if we take the contrast in the following week with Thomas's demand to put his finger in the wounds and Jesus' willingness to allow this to happen so that he might believe, I get a new sense of both Jesus' commitment to us and of the love and care of Mary. Where Jesus says, don't hold on to me, when everything in Mary is crying out to hold him, she chooses to hear Jesus and to be open towards this new thing, towards this new being with Jesus. Whereas Thomas maybe is pushing his own agenda onto Jesus. And even in that place, Jesus opens himself to Thomas's touch in order to change him to come to this new place. The profoundness and commitment of Jesus in that is just astonishing. And there's maybe questions in all of that. There is more to reflect on in this area of touch within the gospel moments. But for now, with Mary, she is opening towards this new time with Jesus, where she is not holding and not touching. Um, And this second aspect that becomes clear in this choice is then... Um, spoken from Jesus where he says to her, go tell what is happening. To follow Jesus is now an act of witness. Mary's first words to the disciples after she runs back from the garden, her first words are, I have seen the Lord. And this for me lies at the heart of everything. That we are witnesses to what we have seen and heard. We witness to that. We do not demand or restrict or require others to worship, to follow Jesus. What we do is witness to what we have seen and heard. We we don't touch the Lord like Mary. We do not hold on to the Lord. But by his Spirit, we too are drawn to know our Saviour, Jesus risen. We are called to the same witness I have seen the Lord. And maybe there is also a further word from this meeting in the garden where Jesus chose to first be seen. When all others had gone, when the garden was empty, while others had gone home wondering, Mary stayed at the tomb. She stayed at the empty tomb, longing to know where the body of Jesus was. And as she waited, in her waiting, Jesus chose to meet her. Now if our lives are about witness to what has happened, and maybe we feel not much has happened in this last year, maybe we need to wait longer at the empty tomb until we too meet afresh with Jesus and then feel the passion and the excitement of Mary to then be sent with the same call to witness to what I've seen and what I've heard. And I think that is the call this Easter day, to stay at the tomb, to stay at the empty tomb until you meet afresh with Jesus and know your witness and then go. May that be what we hear this Easter. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the joy of this wonderful day of resurrection. Help us hear the call into our own lives to to wait for you, to stay at the empty tomb until we meet with you, until you send us, Lord. Help us to be the witnesses 
that you call us to be, to, to speak and say what is taking place in our lives. Thank you for the gift of the Spirit that is coming. Thank you for the joy of the resurrection. Thank you for the new life that is given in these moments. And I pray, Lord, for each one of us to, to wait upon you speaking to us, to be open to your word to us, to let your spirit fall upon us, that we might become witnesses to the glory of God. Joyful in the presence of Jesus, where the words fall from our lips, I have seen the Lord. Help us to know your glory in your resurrection life. We pray in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.